Hey guys, welcome back. Today I am finally going to start modeling my project. And I have chose a Scrambler 6-wheeler ATV. For those of you who don't know what these are, they're basically these amphibious vehicles made in the 60s, 70s, and early 80s. And the reason why I modeled this is because it's one of the only ones I could find blueprints for. And I just like the looks of the 6-wheelers with the lights under the tub. It looks pretty cool when they're out in the water. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started. The blueprint's already set up, and if yours aren't set up, make sure you check out my previous video on how to do that. It's not too hard, and it's extremely helpful to use blueprints. And we don't even need this for right now. Close that out. So we're going to go to Add, Mesh, Plane. Take a good look at this little plane, because eventually this will be your entire vehicle. It's pretty amazing. Go to press 7 on the number pad, go to Top View. And first thing we're going to do is actually go into tab, which brings you into edit mode. I'm going to click this little wrench right here. And this is the modifiers tab. These are basically a whole bunch of fancy things that you can do to your mesh. And we're going to use mirror. And what this does is we're going to go G to the X. And you can see we only model half of the vehicle, which is pretty awesome. And that's all lined up nice. Okay. Making the side of this ATV. So I'm going to rotate by pressing R, X, direct. No, we're going to use Y direction. So rotate, Y, and I'm going to use 90 degrees. You can just type in 90 on your number pad. And I'm going to hit G to move it and get it lined up right there and now I'm gonna scale it down by pressing S and I'm just gonna yeah that's that's all lined up okay I'll press 3 to go into side view and now it's time to start modeling now when I model I like to have the biggest screen possible so you can actually hit the T button which hides this area right here or you can manually do it yourself and then shift and space and that hides this tab right here so you really don't even need that when you're modeling so I'm going to right click up here shift right click that G to the Z axis because that's up and down and get that lined up right about there same thing right here I'm going to put this on top of this thin black line right here because I'm going to use that for when I curve it to the bottom tub so right click shift right click and if you're wondering how I'm moving the view up and down you can just hold shift and move your scroll wheel like that or you can use control and go like that or you can hold your uh, middle mouse button and hold shift and that's how you go like that anyways it's time to get started so I'm going to G to the what is it Y direction Yes, G to the Y. I'm going to go... Uh, I go all the way up to the end of this. You know, actually maybe not. I'm going to go out right... I'm going to line it up right to this right here. And that will basically help me get uh, all my polys ready to go. Now we're actually going to need this right here. So press T. We use the loop, cut, and slide tool. And that adds polys for when you're modeling. So we're going to put it, I'd say the point starts coming really noticeable right here. So I'm going to right click G to the Z. That's going to get a little bit of curvature going on. Actually we need to do it to that also. You're going to want to make sure that all your poly, polys, not polys, vertices, we'll make sure these are as straight as possible. And that will help out immensely when we're going to uh, curve the model. Loop cut slide again. Oh, I'm going to say about right there. Right click, shift right click, E to the Z. And I'm going to put it right there. And actually, I'm going to delete that. Right click, X, delete. And I'm going to make a triangle. Of course, triangles are really bad when you're going to curve something. But in this case, it's alright. 
because it's kind of hard to get a uh, square going on right there. And now, I'm going to add, I'm going to say 3. If you're wondering how to do that, scroll wheel. So, I'm going to add 3. So it's kind of high poly, but I don't care how many polys it is. Honestly, my computer can handle it. I'm going to E to the Z and get out of that, E to the Z. And uh, yeah, it looks pretty nice. Now I'm going to right click on these, shift right click, hit F. That creates a face. Right click on those, shift, holding shift I mean, F, face. Same thing for here. And I don't quite like the look of that, so I'm going to actually hold all these. Go G to the, no, G to the Z. What did I just do? Oh, here we go. G to the Z, right about there. I'm starting to think I might actually have to change that later. Okay. Shift, right clicking. And, yeah, that's about right. I almost need, actually, I'm going to delete these right here. X, delete vertices. And I almost need more polys right here. So, E to the Y, one there. E to the Y, one there. And right click, holding shift, F face, same thing right here. And that, I'm going to just get a little bit more curvature going on here. Curves and Blender can actually take quite a bit of time. That, and I'll probably refine that later when I'm not recording, since I don't want to waste all your time here. I'm going to E to the Y. I'm going to go right there. E to the Y. There. E to the Y. E to the Y. And, yeah, that's pretty good for now. I'm going to make some more triangles, even though they are awful to work with, but I don't really have a choice right here. And it would take quite a bit of time. G to the Y. We're going to get a little bit of curvature going here. G to the Y. And that one actually does not look too bad. And here you can see these are already not straight, so I'm going to G those to the Y. G to the Y. And that looks pretty decent. Now, I'm going to add a few more polys right here. This is normally, this is probably actually more polys than I actually need. But, for the sake of time, and me just wanting to get this to look nice really fast, I'm just going to go with it. Get rid of that. E to this. What? Eh, no Z. There we go. Create a face there. Create a face there. And E to the Y. And here we have a bit of a problem. Yeah, oh crap. Okay, so if this ever happens, if you have more polys on the outside of this face, simple loop cut and slide. And we're going to get that right there. Now, I'm going to E to the Y there, make a face there. Actually, I don't like how rough that looks, so do that. Loop cut and slide again, actually. And I'm going to go E to the, uh, what is that, Z? There, and oh, this is a mess. Let's go loop cut and slide right there. See, that's one problem with triangles, is when you go to loop cut and slide, they do funky things like that. That's not good. So, got the uh, front fender thing going on here. And now, it's time to get this bit cleaned up. This is supposed to be kind of a curve that goes like this, and with the mesh, it kind of goes up and then back down. So, right here, I'm going to go G to the Y kind of fulfill that curve. And actually, while I'm at it, I'm going to get it straight with this. So I'm just going to hold G, move it freehand. This is where zooming in really helps. 
get that right at the edge of that. Right at the edge of that. There. My polys are getting out of line, which I'll probably fix off the camera. And this one's way off. That one's off too. And that one looks good. Now what have I done? One of the mainly uh, stressful things to do with curves. This one's a bit far. And that's not so natural looking. I'll fix that later. And now I'm going to make my final face here. And that sort of fulfills my corner. Now one thing I got really lucky with when I was modeling this earlier is that I noticed I actually have a symmetrical bottom tub. So luckily, I'm going to go into edit mode again. I'm just going to hold all these faces, press A. I'm going to add another mirror modifier. But this time I'm going to put it on the uh, Y direction. And I have that modeled also. I'm pretty lucky. So now you look at this and you're like, oh crap, it's flat. That's not supposed to be like that. Well, this is where the fun part comes in. We're going to press the 1 button, and you can see right here, this is way off the bottom tub. So what we're going to have to do is, we're going to G, Y, or no, G, X. I'm going to get that top one lined up right there. And now, you're going to want to right-click that bottom one. You're going to turn. And you can see that one's connected to all these. So they're going to be basically in the same exact spot in the uh, curving. So we're going like, to hold Alt. We're going to right click. No. That can get kind of tricky. Alt, right click in the middle of that. And it's not normally supposed to do that. Let's do this. Right click, Alt. Here we go. And then I'll just shift click that one also. Okay, so we're going to do G to the X. And we're going to get that one lined up right there. If all of your polys were straight, you wouldn't have... You wouldn't see these uh, little meshes showing right here, which is why you want to make sure they're always straight. And let's go to the next one, Alt, and I'm just going to shift click that one. G to the X, get that lined up right there. And right here you can kind of see, I'm going to fix that one quick. G X behind there. And the reason why it looks so weird right here is because this vertice is higher than the rest when I want to curve it. So I'm going to manually curve that myself, G to the X. And let's get these. Oh wait, that's a loner. I guess I'll do that one itself, G to the X. Right click, Alt, G to the X. And this tub is pretty uh, messy looking. But for the sake of time, I'm not really modeling it perfectly. G to the X, down there. Right click, G to the X. Boom. Right click, G to the X. Or not, G to the X. Wait, yes, G to the X. Okay. Boom. Alt, click, G to the X there and holy crap I'm just gonna shift click that one again G to the X and boom we have the curvature of the scrambler I'm actually gonna move that one quick okay see when they're all straight they look like this and when they're not straight they look like that but anyways now you hit tab and you're in your viewing mode and you're like, holy crap, that looks lumpy and ugly. This is actually a simple fix. You come over to here and you hit smooth. Now that, it looks nice for now, but once you get farther in your model, that button, it just makes it look extremely weird. So we're going to actually go over here to the modifiers and we're going to add edge split. And this right down here, split angle, you're going to change to 45. 
and you're just going to leave that alone. You're not going to apply it or anything. What that does is it lessens the smooth, you could say, because when you just do this, it kind of over smooths it. We didn't get too far, but like I said, you guys have the basic concept of moving these vertices, and doing this can be pretty time consuming, but in the long run, you'll get better at it and it'll be quicker. Let's just take a picture of our prize possession of the day. We're going to hit the O button, and that brings you into your render camera. So now that we're into the render camera, we're going to hold Shift and F. That basically turns it into freehand. And you use the WASD keys for moving this around. The longer that you hold them, the faster it moves. So what I like to do is left-click the mouse button if I'm going too fast, and that stops it. But I'm going to shift F that again, and I'm going to move that right over to there. And left click on that. And now your render camera is all set up. We're going to press O. And you can see that's what this little thing is right here. That is your render camera. For some reason my view is turning around it. I don't know why. So that's actually an easy fix. You hold shift S and you want to click cursor to center and then what you do is control period and that will move your view so that rotates around that center cursor so now that we have our camera all set up we're going to go to this little button right here you can change this from 50% to 100% so you get the best quality possible now we're going to click image and it's not too pretty but you'll laugh at this later on Go to this little button down here, Image, Save as Image, and I'm going to throw that on my desktop, and I'm going to call it Scrambler, oh gosh, Scrambler 1. Save as Image, and now you're done. Alright, one last thing you're going to want to do is File and Save. This is extremely important because you can... Now you locate your picture, and you look at it, and it looks pretty hideous, I'm going to be honest with you. Don't let that demotivate you. Don't Your first render is something that you look back and you laugh upon. I'll just give you a few examples. Look at this beautiful 8-wheeler in my background. Now the first render of that thing was disgusting. Look at that. That is hideous. That is awful. That is disgusting. That's ugly. That's so many words I can't even think of. But then if you pull through to the end, bam, beautiful. Another example is I did a little F1 car. Here's the final render of it. I have still not finished it. But if we look at the first render, that is all I have. That is crap, honestly. That is nothing. So it just goes to show that if you pull through until the end with the project it'll turn out amazing even though you have doubts in the beginning I'm probably going to remodel the part of the scrambler that I did earlier because I was on a time limit and it's just not as straight and set up as I wanted it to be so I hope you guys start your project after watching this video just remember that um, you need your vertices and straight lines that'll keep it all pretty and smooth which is why the scrambler kinda looked a bit off, I would say. Anyways, good luck on your project, and I'll see you in the next video.